Hi, welcome to Conversation with Nadia Themis here with Helene TV. And today we are very honored to have with us an astrophysicist and uh, amazing man with a uh, huge, huge experience of life and not only. And I'm very, very proud to have you with me. Welcome, Mr. Stasinopoulos, Mr. Baminon Stasinopoulos. And uh, really, it's a big honor for me having you to my show. And I feel that I am already, because we had this one discussion before, I feel that I have so much knowledge more than before. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you, and I'm very happy you are here. Thank you. So, a Greek man, right? But was born in Germany. Yes, I was born in Bonn, but I was raised in Berlin. Of course, uh, considering my age, which is in 97. <laughs> 97. We will know his secret later on. <laughs> it was my first question. Yeah. No, I had finished uh, high school in Germany. Yes. I had skipped classes when I was 15. But uh, when Hitler came to power legally. Yes. Legally. Like, legally. Uh, like our present president. That's also very interesting. Legally. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the first years before he had the Olympics in 1936, he didn't touch the Jewish problem. He, the, the elections in 1933 had the result of the Social Democrats getting 35%, the Nazis, yes. Hitler, 33%, and the Communists, 32%. Wow. of the vote. The president, Hindenburg, assigned, according to the Constitution, the formation of the government to the first party, yes. Social Democrats. They couldn't form a government, and according to the Constitution, Hindenburg had to assign the formation of a government to the second party, Nazis. I see. When Hitler got the author Legally. to form a government, he burned the Reichstag, the Congress. Yes arrested a Dutch communist, van der Luppe Onomati, the name, executed him and declared police state. He says, we are under attack in 33. In 33, yeah. Now, Hitler's major problem was the Jewish problem. Yes. But he didn't Fortunately. touch the Jewish problem until after the Olympics in 1936. What, what did he do? What happened to the 35% Social Democrats yes. and the 32% communists? communists? Did they turn Nazi? No. no. It has never been mentioned. There is no statistics. No ever. It is estimated, yes. unofficially, that between 6 to 8 million Germans were executed. We are executed. But there's no proof to this and nowhere has this ever been mentioned. Officially. Never. Anyway, Hitler's one of the many programs was to cleanse the Aryan German race from all foreign blood. It didn't matter if you had descendants, if you had parents or grandparents, Swedish, Norwegian, Dutch, yes. British, French, anything. You were undesirable. Undesirable. You should be strictly pure, pure Aryan pure. German. He wanted the whole country. He started persecuting. Nice. The, po the policies were very, uh, I should say, hostile. Of course. To people. We were. I and my brother. Yes. Were in high school, and one day coming home. We were attacked by a group of Hitler Jugend and beaten to pulp. We spent a week in a hospital. My father decided we are going to leave like thousands of other families with other nationalities. You uh, didn't have a choice. No. And we left in 35. 35. You have another one sibling. We, we were not allowed to take anything with us except the suitcases that we could carry. Everything else had to le be left behind. My father made a decision at that time and says, we are going back to the country of our forefathers, back uh, to Greece. 
So in 1935, we arrived in Athens, and I tell you one thing. Berlin at that time was yes. considered the Paris, Paris of East Europe. In comparison, Athens yes. in 1935 was a dry, dusty, totally, uh, shall I say, I, I, not a plant, not a flower, not a tree, except the king's garden. <laughs> you know, it, it, it was uh, a shock for you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, and uh, <laughs> it was difficult. Yeah. I couldn't speak a word Greek. Wow. <laughs> but my father insisted, and rightfully. Yes. It was too me, dangerous for he you. Got me a professor for two years. I learned Greek, and finally, there is a school in Athens. Mm -hmm. Very famous and very high quality. It's called Pyramatico Scolio du Panepistimeo Athenon. They were able to get me in. But when I got in, I was 70 or 18 I've, about that time. Yes. The school had a rule. No student was allowed to have long pants except the graduating class. Okay. Yes. We had rule though. <laughs> so I walked in the day I was supposed to, but I was permitted because of my age. Yes. To wear long pants, and I had a little mustache. And the moment I walked in the class, the students stood up, ah. thinking I'm a new <laughs> teacher. <laughs> I said to my father, "I'm not going <laughs> back." <laughs> <laughs> but he insisted. He insisted. I, I went to the back seat in the class, <laughs> hiding myself. <laughs> I was no, I'm not the teacher, right? <laughs> no, but the kids were fantastic. They were smart. And they, they gave me a, a, a name, Pater Familias. Pater Familias. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you are the famous uh, Pater Familias of the school. <laughs> no, they were terrific. Yeah. I had. Uh, people with whom I developed strong relationship. One of them famous in Greece for political reasons, Leonidas Kirkos, yeah. Ulandridis, Maridopoulos, a, a lot of names. And um, it went fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, after we finished, I started law studies. And that's a story by itself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no. Uh, you I studied here in Greece. I remember uh, certain things from that time. Uh, of course, not all pleasurable, because in 1940, Mussolini attacked. I was 20 years old. I apparently was tried to be drafted, but there was no time. Okay. for training us because the whole thing lasted ex six months yeah. and the German tanks came down we couldn't resist because we didn't have any tanks or ha we didn't have any air oh, okay. force to speak of but uh, we again performed the miracle of conquering the attacking Amazing. superior power Amazing. we conquered half of Albania I remember seeing at that time the whole, what was a division of Italian prisoners being transported through Athens to Piraeus to be transported to the Middle East, mm. prisoners of war. Yeah. Anyway, the occupation came, triple occupation, Bulgarian, Italian and yeah. German. I joined the National Resistance ECA of Colonel Psaros who was later killed by the communists mm. in Peloponnese. And uh, we had a Kessel Ring headquarters was in the Metochikota Mio. Yes. And I think, uh, if I remember correctly, they controlled all the supplies of Rommel's troops in Africa, controlling the, the refurbishing and the support supply. We had established contact with a German captain of the Air Force. He was a lawyer, an Austrian lawyer. He hated the system. He worked with us. 
Wow. Yeah. And uh, with my capacity of German, I yes. mean, I'm, you know. You are German, I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, I had no problem. But uh, things didn't stay safe. He would give me information and I would put it with a pin ah. on my underwear. One, I uh, had, of course, changed residence, changed names and everything. We oh. all did. Yeah. But when I... Very courageous, when huh? When I got doing the occupation. Yeah. Oh, when the Germans came, the first day in May 1940, the German embassy sent a letter to us. Yes. I, if I remember correctly, something like, Dear brothers, or something, we admire Greece and Sparta, a, a great country, the Greeks and so forth. We would like you, they needed interpreters and transport, translators. Uh, oh. uh, we would like to invite you to help us in the great work as friends and companions. Uh, propaganda letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That made us all. Disappear. <laughs> <laughs> when we got the letter, <laughs> that was it. But anyway, uh, the years were the toughest that I can remember. Because uh, you've been in two world wars, no, not just I, I, I had changed name and I had to disappear. And I disappeared from, the f yeah. f f from any, anybody and anything that knew me. I How was that? I mean, it must I be very, very difficult. I changed. I, I did not contact anymore any people that I had known before or had uh, associations with or uh, working relationships or anything. Yes. And uh, that that was uh, an absolute necessary. Otherwise, you yeah, know, I was, in, I was in great danger because I was formerly a German and they needed people desperately to help them with a language capacity desperately so no this this was not a good time definitely <laughs> not not a good time at all yeah. no. and i remember distinctly the people lying dead starvation in athens dead in the streets dead in the streets starvation the germans would have prisoners collect them on a on a truck and m m remove them from the street people died I think if you, oh, after this kind of experience, there is more worse experience other than war. Yeah, but for me, up to that time, I had not participated in any warlike yeah. situation. <laughs> that was the first sample <laughs> of it's, what a yes. war is like. <laughs> not, not a very good an sample. Occupation. An occupation. And then in October 44, if I remember correctly, the Germans left. And what I remember from that time was that most of the country, including parts of Athens, were controlled by the Eam Elas yes. at that time. I remember something like uh, Churchill came to Athens, I think, and then uh, General Scobie from uh, uh, Egypt came with some British regiments mm -hmm. and helped clear the Athens area. And then in '46. The uh, exiled government had returned from uh, Egypt, yes. Greek government, and they started uh, to reconstitute the National Greek Army. And I was walking on University Street, Panepistimiu, when a military patrol stopped me. That was in 1946, so yes. I was 25, 26 years old. And they asked me, why aren't you a soldier? I said, because Echo uh, Anavoli, Logos Pudon, yes. says, they didn't they didn't accept oh. I say, how do I know that? I have no idea about that. He says, we, stand, we sent letters to all. I say, I never received a letter. Doesn't matter. Put me <laughs> on the truck and sent me to Haidari, to a training center. Oh, Military so they training. drafted you That's by all. force? Yeah. 
I asked the uh, officer at Haldari, can I call my wife, or can, uh, not my wife, my mother. And uh, Effie at that time, we were uh, engaged. So I called Effie, my engagement. I was, at that time, I was working at the Han as uh, head of the student department. My wife was head As you were studying law, right? In you were studying law, yes. Yeah. And my wife was head of the education department. Oh. So we called Effie. Effie called my mother. <laughs> the next day, Effie and my mother visited Haidari <laughs> 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 to see me. No, but uh, we were trained. I was, because of my uh, advanced legal studies, I was made oplonomos. Oh. That was uh, the recruits. Yes. We have to be trained in weapons. The weapons, I was re responsible for the weapons in a special room. I could sleep in there by myself, privately. <laughs> With the guns around. I had privileges. Yes, you did. <laughs> you know, but anyway, after that I was assigned uh, to the Protiberarchia under General Ketseas. And I forget details. I remember we started on another general. Was it General Papus? The, uh, nickname. Anyway, I took part in uh, the uh, operations Ecatharisis Rumelis, but this was short. Yeah. Then with the Protimerarchia, we had, I, w I was Argos or Esticone Story, Castoria, Malimadi, Vizi, all over the places until 1950. Yeah. That's four years. Finally, <laughs> Effie was able to convince some people at the m military yes. that, hey, he let has him been go. Years <laughs> out there. Isn't it time to bring him at Athens yes. before he's killed? <laughs> Anyways, I was transferred to Athens in January 1950. And uh, I was dismissed from the army in June. In July, I married. I had refused to marry. You had refused? Yes, I told Effie, Effie wanted to marry before I went. I said, no way. If I get killed, you're a widow. A widow is not good to be in Athens at the time. That was very lovely. For I said, her. no way. Wow. If I live, we marry when I get <laughs> released. <laughs> And you were both lucky having each other. Yeah. You lived. But she was also active in war, I'm Effie. Sorry? She was active also. Uh, <laughs> she was active. She got a, an award from uh, Field Marshal Alexander for saving the life of many stranded British soldiers. She would pick them up, take them home, wow. change their hair color to black, give them full civilian dresses, feed them, and try to help them in spite of the extremely tight controls of movement. She must be courageous and very she powerful. She was not alone. She was part of a group. I and see, the group yeah always organized eventually with contacts they had. We never knew all the information for everybody and everything. I was also in the ECA. I didn't know everything, contacts or so, in order just to be sure if we were caught, yes. we didn't so have the have knowledge if they forced us or so, yes. tortured us. So these uh, British soldiers were eventually taken by Effie or members of the group to little places on the coastlines along Attica where submarines would come and pick them up. Yes. That's all I know. I don't know. She never told me more details. She wasn't supposed to. Yes. And I, I don't know more. But I have the certificate of Field Marshal Alexander 
uh, for thanking her for the services wow. to save uh, soldiers of the British Army. So two fighters together, they got married. <laughs> and then you went to the United yeah. States. She, she was a courageous woman. She uh, definitely. Yeah. And a fabulous person. Yes. A fabulous. I miss her very much. Yeah. I'm sure you do. Yeah. But uh, that's it. And then we went to States, 1954. <laughs> that, that, that's true. But you have to look at the interval. Yes. Effie became pregnant. And I worked in the meantime at the, legally, at the Bank of Athens. Yes. Trapez Athenon. Doesn't exist anymore. It became Ethniki Athenon and then later Ethniki okay. Athenon was dropped. And uh, I had a relatively good f future. But then uh, America was too much of an <laughs> attractive <Okay>. magnet. <laughs> yeah. I know. You see, during the reason I'm saying this, there's a. I have to start the story a little. During the Civil War, we called it Antarctic War. Yes. But it's a civil war. In 1948, the British stopped supplying us. All the equipment we had by that time was British. The Americans took over. And uh, Van Fleet, General Van Fleet, came with about, a, I think, a big contingent of about a few hundred uh, officers and personnel. And we were being trained in the 48 period in American equipment and uh, American systems. Yes. In that my Effie's brother spoke fluently English, mm -hmm. drafted, was made a lieutenant, and attached to the Van Fleet group, Effie's brother. So it was in the family? Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was assigned to a major in the Signal Corps of the American Army. He became friends. With, mm. Conor, with Major Rippey at that time. And Effie's family, when Rippey's wife came to Athens, hosted her at home. Oh. And... So then... Yeah, George Rippey was just like a brother to us. Uh, so in the time in 1954, when the opportunity arose to go to America, there were two obstacles. Yes. One, there was a quota system at that time. Because I was born in Germany, I was under the German quota, which was free. There's nobody going. Yes. The Greek quota was so heavily <laughs> applic uh, applications, for 10 years I would have to wait. So I got my papers from the from American the embassy to travel to America within three months. <laughs> <laughs> but Rippy mm -hmm. had become, in the meantime, full curl at the Pentagon. Yes. He says, you come and you stay with us for a while until you are settled. Yeah, so you, you get settled. But then Effie was pregnant, so we wrote Rippy, we decided not to come because uh, we will have a baby and that is too much we think for you, to, you know. And uh, we decided not to come. We got a letter from the we will definitely be, ah. you have to come, baby or not, you're welcome. So that's how we went. My daughter was six months old in a basket. In a basket. <laughs> it took us 15 days on a ship from Piraeus to New York. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> yeah, your whole life was an adventure. I, I, when I landed in Hoboken, all I had was $35 in my pocket. $35. <laughs> a wife and a baby. But Ribby was there. He was waiting for us at the pier. He was a full colonel at that time. Took us to his home to Washington and we stayed with him. I mean, they, did, they insisted to uh, be there the first six months till we, I was able to find yeah. a job and arrange things.
But now the problem was the future. Law? Law, yeah. I tried to support law. I applied to two universities, Georgetown University and Boston University. They both declined my past because they explained to me, he says, the, um, the American law is based on Anglo-Saxon common law. The Greek yes. law is yes. based on Napoleonic codified law. The two don't match. Yes. So I had to either start law from the beginning yeah. or I didn't like law. Really? Yeah. I liked physics. Wow. So I went into math and physics. I was what? Let me tell you. I was 39 years old. That was about four, five years after arrival. Yes. Because I had, I couldn't speak English. I couldn't understand it. You know, German and English very close. We listened to BBC during the country. I had no problem understanding. But I'd never spoken yes. English. So I needed to... To learn the cultivate. language. But then I uh, started college. At the age of 39? Yes, with students 18 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you are again <laughs> Pater Familias. Yes. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> again undergraduate. <laughs> I had to do it. But nothing, maybe nothing happens by accident? No. I mean, you didn't like law and no, you no. had... No, it's a well-planned, waited patiently, nothing rushed, nothing excessive. Yeah, but uh, I all owned really uh, great debt to my wife. She worked. She was appointed by the Ipurgium Pedias yeah. professor. She finished Athens University with two degrees. Wow. Literature and archaeology. And uh, she was appointed official uh, teacher, professor of the Greek personnel. You see, the personnel to the embassy, both uh, civilian diplomats, yeah. technical staff, and military, are there for three to five years. They bring their kids with them, of course. Yes. The kids miss Greek school for three to five years. Yes. When they come back, they know English well and so forth, but they have missed the Greek Pretty education. Good. Effie was classical. She was appointed as professor of Greek language and was a, 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 attached to the yeah. Greek embassy and taught all the families <laughs> of the diplomats, the military and the economy, economic Amazing. and uh, personnel, Greek. the children Greek. But that was a great income. While I was studying, I had no income. Effie was supporting yes. us. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So she was an amazing woman. She was supporting the whole family. She, she was, was fantastic. fantastic. She, she was, was uh, looking after our, our, our daughter, daughter, home, and her, her profession. profession. I mean, she, she was, was uh, an exceptional woman. So it's important, Mr. Snobulas, to success for a person the family, the support of the family. It was an uh, important ingredient for you. Absolutely. Yes. Abs I, 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 would I would not have, have been, been able to, to do what I did or make, make the, the progress, progress without her help. Actually, Actually for, for years, years, she was the only supporting f member of the family. Yeah. When I was studying, I had expenses, but no income. <laughs> <laughs> In America, in America, it's not, not like in Greece. Greece. You, you have, have to, to pay, pay tuition. tuition. Yes. <laughs> so how was it, uh, Padre Familias, again, studying? Uh, yeah, but uh, no, they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, use an expression like this, but, no. you know, I was still the, the old guy in the class. <laughs> but uh, the kids were fine. I uh, was able to develop some friendships with the kids, but the difference in age was too big <laughs> to last. Anyway, in 1961, I joined NASA and have been... How NASA. that happened? Tell me. Yes. And since NASA, since 61, I'm still with NASA, uninterrupted. Yeah. I was... Uh, NASA at that time had uh, started a year before, I think, the 59 or 50 or 60, 
had established Goddard Space Flight Center, which is located between Washington yes. and Baltimore. And uh, at that time, there were only a very few buildings there and a few hundred people. I don't remember the near the uh, amount. But today it's an uh, enormous, <laughs> enormous settlement. I don't know how many, 40 buildings <laughs> and laboratories and everything and thousands of people. Amazing. Yeah, it has grown like, you know, the agency has grown since that time. NASA. So, because most of the people like me, we are not familiar with science and NASA and you are in specific in radiation. What is your, what exactly you will be doing in NASA, yeah, if you I've, can explain I, us? Th that's a good question. Uh, most people that study like I did, yes. go into cosmology. I didn't. It didn't attract me and I was more focused on radiation. Radiation. Radiation is a threat to human life, not only in space, on the ground, on Earth, and uh, it's particularly acute for space missions. You see, the on the ground of the Earth, we are protected yes. from cosmic rays, first by the magnetic field of the Earth, which deflects the cosmic rays, yes. and second, by the atmosphere, yeah. the density of the atmosphere absorbs cosmic rays that are able to penetrate the magnetic field. With other words, the uh, penetration capability of a cosmic ray depends on the energy it has. If it is extremely energetic, it yes. can overcome the magnetic field, but then the atmosphere is the next level of protection. How? Yes. At about 60,000 feet altitude, these cosmic rays usually are absorbed by Coulomb scattering absorption with the constituents of the atmosphere, oxygen and nitrogen. Yes. But there is a, there is a, <laughs> A side effect, not a good one. Every single cosmic ray yeah. produces over 500 daughter products. Protons, electrons, neutrons, counts, muons, gamma rays, x-rays, everything. One cosmic ray particle does that, over 500 daughter products. Oh. And the greatest density, the greatest of, of that radiation is a 60,000 feet. As you come closer down and the density of the atmosphere increases, it absorbs these daughter products until on the surface a very few reach that point. So we are protected. That's why I'm very concerned about all this talk about Mars and sending not not an expedition, but colonization of Mars. Yes. There is no atmosphere, no magnetic field. The atmosphere of Mars is 6% of the Earth's density. And it's 96% carbon dioxide. So it's impossible Poisonous. to... Yeah, so how we can live there? Yeah, you tell me that. Well, well of course. If the plans of mm -hmm. dreamers, yeah. fantasies, of settling people on Mars, envision underground, you have to have at least 12 feet of Earth to protect you from cosmic rays. Yes. So you have to go underground or build concrete walls six feet thick you know, to have people. And then atmosphere, you have to create an atmosphere. You cannot breathe at the 96% carbon dioxide. And then there's no water on Mars. Not a single drop of water. They claim underground is water. Yeah, find it. And if they find it, the average temperature on Mars is minus 60 degrees Celsius, going up to 150, minus. Do you know what that means? Yeah. If, if you 
pour water on the surface, it has to freeze. <laughs> Minus 60 degree average. At some times, near the Martian equator, during summertime, the temperature may rise up to 20 degrees positive. Short. Overnight it drops again into the mass. And this is very short. So the, the planet is totally alien, hostile, harmful. Are they very optimistic? Why do they want to live there? They are experimenting on Mars. There is an enormous propaganda and an enormous media and government support for the following things that were advocated yes. by Hawking and by Musk and other, other people, Bezos is also involved. A. Humanity will be extinct on Earth. That's, I, I have it written, I will give it to you in writing. Yes. The statements by Hawking and by Musk and the other people. Their statements, not mine. They say the possibility of humanity getting extinct in the next thousand years, he said, and then recently before he died, he changed it to the next hundred years that humanity will become extinct due to asteroid, virus, war, uh, any other yes. conditions. And therefore, humanity has to become a planet, a multi-planet species, colonize other places, and according to Hawkins, also other solar systems. Now, let's look at this for a moment. Yes. Please. Other planets, Mercury and Venus cannot be visited. Yes. Yeah, out of question. Mars can be, and Mars could be hypothetically colonized. Yes. All the other planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, are gas planets. You cannot land on a gas planet. You cannot colonize a gas planet. But then they talked about the moons of Jupiter or Saturn. Yeah, it's ice. <laughs> you colonize ice. I mean. It's silly. It's silly, yeah. It's, it's, it's total nonsense. But billions of dollars going into that. Now, another thing with Mars. Let us say we support 10 couples. Okay. We built a tunnel, we equip it with everything, supply it with water, food, and all the things. And they have children. And the children grow up on Mars in one-third gravity. Mars' gravity is only one-third of the gravity of Earth. These kids will be totally adapted to that gravity when they grow up. Yeah. They can never come back to Earth, they will die. Yeah, they can never go to any other place. So how in heaven's name are we humans, Homo sapiens, going to be multi-planet species? Because these kids will be a new New species. species, yeah, exactly. So, so multi-planet species is out. Then the next thing, populate other solar systems. Yes, let's look at it. Why not? What's the nearest one? Alpha Centauri, four point something light years. Light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second, right? Yes. We sent the Curiosity rover to Mars at average 240 days, about 15,600 kilometers per hour. At that speed, it will take 225,000 years to go to Alpha Centauri. Let's say we invent new systems of propulsion, nuclear, matter, antimatter, I don't care what. Yeah. That is 100 times faster. It will stay, still take 2,250 years to go <laughs> to Alpha Centauri. Are you going to populate Alpha Centauri? <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is silly. And that coming from Elon Musk file, he's not a physicist, not an astrophysicist, coming from Hawkins, that gives me very great concern. So, will the humanity be extinct? I'm sorry? Will humanity be extinct, you think? Of course. Look, the hypothesis of extinction. Yes. But the other thing, 
that they did not consider at all. Yes. Let's say we solve all the problems for Mars. Okay. Trillions of dollars, hundreds of years, but we solve it. Who says that whatever can destroy humanity on Earth cannot destroy humanity on Mars? <laughs> so why go there in the first place? I'm sure humans will find a way to destroy yeah. wherever we go. Instead of spending the trillions for that, let's spend them on Earth. Let's save the Earth. So let's look. They're talking about global warming. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Uh, let's look at that. Yes, please, please. <laughs> please. Yes. The is there a global warming? Global warming. Yes. So global warming is a it's a physical process. Yes. On geologic times, repeatedly, the Earth cooled up and warmed up, cooled up and warmed up. If you have read maybe that the American continent was populated approximately between 12 to 13,000 years ago, when the ice melted, yeah. about 10,000 years we came out of an ice age. We are now in an interglacial period. We are now in a normally period of Earth warming. What had happened? We aggravated it. The phenomenon is a natural phenomenon, which we the humans have much have uh, uh, increased in intensity for the detriment of the planet. Are there possibilities to modify? Of course. First thing is, cut CO2 emissions naturally, immediately. Naturally. That will slow it down if we can cut it completely to the physical, geological yes. warming that we cannot do anything about. Secondly, through just uh, sorry, through green energy we could do that. We could do that through green energy. No, but there are other means we can modify. Okay. For example, drought. There. Last year there was a big fire in the area of uh, close to Saranida. Yes. A big fire. In California and other places, yeah. fires, wildfires, uh, yes. in, immensely, destroying whole areas, cities, and villages, and people. It's a drought. How do we how do we counter that? First, we need water. The earth is three quarters water. We have water coming out of our ears. <laughs> <laughs> what we don't have in some places rain. Yes. That's why we have Sahara, Gobi yes. and all the other deserts. Exactly. Have you seen the picture of an oasis in the Sahara. Have you seen a picture? Yeah. There's yes, a little I, well yeah. and around it are trees and uh, plants. Yes. So, solution. Pump, instead of spending billions or trillions to Mars, take them, pump enormous water into the Sahara. Convert it into a tropical forest as it used to be millions of years ago. What will that help? It will create business, exactly. jobs, places for people to, li to live, and it will modify the weather. And you can do that for, for all the immense areas of desert we have on the globe. Convert this. What effect will this have on the weather? Then, besides that, you can pump weather into the drought areas where plants yeah. are starving, trees are starving because they're dry. Exactly. We can, we can do that. We have the means, we have the electricity, we have the machines, we have the water, we have everything. Desalination, simple. All Saudi Arabia has no water. Yeah. Everything they use is desalinated. Yeah. We can do it, do it at a cost that is small in comparison to what they're talking about colonizing Mars. So and it's all about have, interest. We can help the Earth. Yeah. 
there is the problem of rising sea levels. Some scientists have estimated that between extrema of warming and extrema of icing of the globe, the sea levels rise and fall about 120 feet. Fine, but that doesn't happen in 50 or 100 years. It happens in tens of thousands of years. Yes. Now the sea level is estimated rises a centimeter or something a year, but it rises. Solution for the next thousand years. Do what they did in Holland, dikes. Holland is below sea yes, level. Yes, below sea level. They protected them, dikes. <laughs> Just build a dike. If you can't move the population to higher ground, yes. build a dike. New Orleans will be <laughs> on the water. Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so there are ways, but they are not doing it. No. They prefer to spend this on Mars. Yeah, they, this is, uh, there may be other ways. I mean, I, yes. I, I, that's not my field. I haven't studied it. I cannot have solutions for everything like that. These are just thoughts that come to my mind, you know, from general yes. considerations. But otherwise... Uh, but regarding the radiation, can we, regarding the radiation, that's your field? Yeah, radiation, but radiation doesn't play a role in that. No. No. Not on the ground. Yeah. Radiation is important for the airlines. And not so much for the passengers, which of course are exposed, but for the crews, because the crews are there every day for years of their profession, of their career. And they are, they are exposed. And they are exposed and have to be careful, uh, particularly when uh, during solar maximum activity, there are solar flares or coronal mass ejections. Mm. Because at that time, uh, I have to explain something here. Yes. The magnetic field, I have a picture that I can show you yes. when we are through. The magnetic field, as I said, protects the Earth by deflecting the cosmic rays and ac according to their energy. Yes. The very, very energetic one penetrate. But over the poles, if this is the, if this is the, the magnet, the Earth, over the poles, North Pole and South Pole, the magnetic field lines are open to interplanetary space. Mm -hmm, yeah. There is no magnetic protection. Over the poles, the cosmic rays come in directly down to the atmosphere. Oh. So, when there are serious solar flares yes. or magnetic disturbances, airlines are advised you would usually Not fly at 39, 40,000 feet yes. to drop to 25,000 feet for the density of the atmosphere will protect them. Still, they receive a large dose. Wow. And this is of concern to the crews, yes. not the passengers. I mean, the passengers will get the exposure, but since how many times in their yeah. life? That, you know. Unless we are that lucky, yeah. you know. That, and particularly for pregnant women. Why? There's a Greek, there's a professor at the Athens University in physics, who write a, I would say, for a professor in physics, a nonsense article. I answered him, he never reported. I hear now he's retired. He claimed that women should not travel because breast cancer. Yes. This is nonsense. All radiation anywhere cause, may cause breast cancer. There is a special rule for pregnant women not to travel. What is the rule? Pregnancy. Up to three months, a woman yes. pregnant should not travel on airs. Why? Let's look at the fetus. One yes. cell germinated, yeah. Yeah. becomes two, become four, become eight, 16, 32. Yeah. Right? Yes. That's how the fetus develops. Yes. For the first three months, if a cosmic ray hits and destroys hundreds develop. or thousands of cells, they cannot be replaced. It will be defective. Yes. After three is big enough, the fetus big enough, that it can it tolerate protect. and repair. That's the reason pregnant women should, should not, not fly, fly up to three months. <laughs>
<laughs> and not breast cancer. No breast cancer. Eh? <laughs> the man didn't know what he was talking about. So it's about. good that the radiation cannot affect people that much. Uh, look, there is increased radiation exposure for every flight for everybody. Yes. But that's not lethal or. Uh, yes. Yeah. I have flown. I would say over the last sixty years, a thousand times, all over the globe. I must have received radiation far more than a person who didn't. Yeah. But still, the body is able. I mean, every cosmic ray that hits us will kill, will affect us. But the body repairs. It can tolerate. Yes. There's cancer develops even for people who have never been on an airplane. Yes. Well, it's uh, not what, what is going on with cancer? <laughs> it's spread. It's. I mean, it's. Yeah, no. It's killing a lot, a lot, lot of people. No. Children have cancer. Yes. Yeah. You know, and they have never been anywhere. Yeah, never. Yeah. No, no. I, I'm not a MD. I cannot express any opinion so far, but just practically, you know, that's... But no, women pregnant should avoid the flying. Before three months. Yeah. So I, I see the metals here. <laughs> Tell me about the awards. Oh my God. Yes. There is an international organization that is called RADEX. RADEX. RADEX means radiation effects on components and systems. This organization, I'm one of the founders of that organization. It was founded in 1989 at the University of Montpellier II in France yes. as a French organization, national. In 19... 91, we decided to make it international. It's an immensely important, popular organization. Every year. Last year it was in Geneva, Switzerland. I have uh, been uh, active in it and, as I said, a member of the founding group since the early days. Yes. They felt uh, <laughs> compelled to give me a very rare Yuri Gagarin award. Wow, really? That's amazing. You can see that. It's Yuri Gagarin award. Yeah. <laughs> And the certificate, you can see that. So you see, I mean, why I'm honored having Mrs. Tassinopoulos with us today. It's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So it says uh, Yuri Gagaria World Certificate is to certify that the Paminondas George Aristotle Alexander Stasinopoulos is awarded for the great long-term individual contribution to the development of international cooperation and partnership relations in the space industry, as well as the process of preparation and running international events of Radix Association. <laughs> yeah, I was totally surprised because I didn't, this is issued actually by the Roscosmos, but through Radix. Through Radix, yes. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> I have about <laughs> a whole list Tons of certificates, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. You see, everybody who works in the field, the field, don't forget, this space field yes. is a new, was a new field. And everybody who took part in it from the beginning was able to contribute and be recognized for that. I mean, there are people who have done far more than I have, you know. Uh, Stamatis Krimigis is one of the luminaries in, uh, as a scientist in this field. And uh, I think he is the, in, in the group of Van Allen, of, uh, well, who shall I say else, Carl Sagan, no, the leaders, the yeah. luminaries. So there are many people that work in that, that have. Yeah, with NASA, I have been very fortunate 
to find a place where my physical talents and my capacity was able to, to bloom, so yeah, to speak, blooms, you know, yeah, yeah. and help me. Yeah. And uh, I'm grateful for that. How was it working with NASA? They say that, I don't know if uh, rumors, but if you start working for NASA, you cannot you never get away or that you have to be there. No, and, uh, no it's just no, a myth. No. The n uh, uh, certain things, like in every other government institution, are confidential. Yes. Uh, but my work was not in a classified area. All my work is open. I have published several books, and there is a list here, down there. No? This one? No, the other one. This. Yeah, this. Is yes. a list that shows you some of the books that I have written, and you can see the prices that um. Amazon sells these books for. Look at the prices. The I don't prices get. I don't get any money. <laughs> the money goes Why? to the money. Everything I did as a civil servant belongs to the government. government. I, just to say a price, indicate price, and I can have this, uh, I will write a blog also, I will write an article for you too, <laughs> and I will have all the information you can find there on NadiaThemis.com, but one price for non-equatorial terrestrial, excuse my pronunciation, <laughs> uh, low altitude charge particle radiation environment, just an indication, it's $434. By Amazon. By Amazon, yeah. And everything goes to NASA. Yes? Yeah. Yes. There are some 400, and there are, there's a list. Yeah, you so have a, a, a list at the end sold out. They don't have a price because they don't have it anymore. Oh, this is currently sold, sold out, out for radiation. Here are out, out of, of print. print. Out of print. I'm right. I'm working on uh, some project right now uh, that uh, are not directly my research. Yes. Have nothing to do with my research, with my work. Yes. I'm writing something that is really, in essence, critical oh. of what is being propagated in the in the media and published. I would love for, to have for, that when you For finish. example, I'd like to give you an example. Yes, please. A group of people, Yes. a, a lot of people, first, first, a lot of people are involved in doing research that uh, is supposed to support the potential movement to Mars. Not an expedition movement of two or three people, but... Yes. Massive movement, colonization, yes. if you will. Yeah. I told you that we cannot become multi-planet species. Have I told you why we cannot colonize Mars? Have I told you why we cannot terraform Mars? I haven't told you that. No. No. But I've told you what Mars. That is not. Yeah. Is. Yeah. Okay. That we need to build in, like a, a in, city, in like. A of that yeah. trend, popular very much these yes. days. Uh, experiments are being performed by leading specialists, recognized specialists, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, performing experiments to determine the effect of radiation on human travelers in space and on satellites on Mars. Yes. Fine. Necessary to be done? Good. Yes. Excellent. What is my point? My point is that I am concerned about the way the experiments are being performed. May I explain? Uh, please. Okay. You cannot take humans and put them in the radiation for test purposes. Guinea pigs. <laughs> you cannot do that. Yes. So you have to find something else. Yes. You can take bio biological samples, tissues, but mostly you take animals. animals. They used to take chimpanzees, but that's not allowed anymore. 
yeah. because chimpanzees are too high a class of animal. They use rats and rodents. Yes. And irradiate them. Fine. They have found or thought that it is best to irradiate them with uh, heavy ions. Let me tell you what our heavy ions are. The cosmic rays yes. are composed of all the elements that are on a chemical table. Have you seen a chemical table? You know chemical. Yes. The light elements. Mm -hmm. The lightest. Hydrogen and helium. Yes. All the other elements are called HZE, heavy Z elements. Z is the charge. Okay. These people, the scientists, qualified people, have selected for irradiating the rodents with titanium, oxygen, and iron ions. Okay. And they have irradiated them yes. with doses, doses that they consider low in their explanations and they have established that the targets, the rodents, have suffered mental oh. re problems. Yes. Okay. With other words, damaged in their brains. Yes. Fine. It's a fact. Established. My question is, what has this to do with humans in space? Why am I concerned? I tell you. First, the rat brain is one gram. The human brain is a thousand. The rat's neurons are seven times ten to the seventh. The human, yes, thousand times more. The cross-sectional, yeah. cross-sectional yeah. area of the human brain is twelve centimeters squared. Yes. That's 144 centimeters squared. The rat is one centimeter squared. So how they can... Now, the dose they imparted on that rat brain, of course, correctly caused damage. damage. The same beam on the human would only affect one thousandth of the brain neurons. Yes, yes. yes. Can never produce brain damage of the size reported on the rodents. So it's all about propaganda for what? Yeah. No. Money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's more to it. Yes. I'm writing right now a paper and I'm actually have uh, thought about it and I'm trying to rewrite it because I want to include more of the cases that I have been able to identify. The hydrogen and helium yes. population is 99% of the cosmic rays. 1% of the cosmic rays are all the other 90 elements of the chemical table. Now, simple logic. Yes. The 99% of the cosmic rays, hydrogen and helium, enormous yes. numbers. All the other elements, the one or two elements with a thousand particles, abundance. The rest are in the two digits or one digits. 99% yes. versus 1%. Of course, the 1% is bigger, okay. heavier, ionization greater makes more one of the heavy makes more damage than one of the light but the light are <laughs> 99 Not percent. Yeah. now how can you take the heavy elements use them in your test on on the brain of the mouse and then say apply right. this to humans astronauts they, they, because they advertise that in their writing yes. that astronauts will be affected by similar effects on their travel. 
and be in, unable to survive or control their mission, which is nonsense. There are so many. Th so truths. you see now. Here's one thing. Yes. A French philosopher, Voltaire. Yes. Said one brilliant thing: It is dangerous to be right when the government is wrong. <laughs> Now, our government supports these, these people, people yes. millions of dollars. Millions, yes. Uh, I'm careful. I don't want to be appearing as fighting. Yes. All I want to do is point out the truth. differences or weaknesses. I don't say, don't do these tests. We need these tests that tell you something what happens to the brain. But you cannot apply the result that you get on rodents to apply them on astronauts or predict the astronauts yes. will have that result because you did an experiment that's good, gives you new information about all the things that happen to the neurons in the brain and so forth, but it is not relevant to an astronaut in space. When you think you will have your book ready? <laughs> I don't know, maybe months. I have to be very careful. I have to be slow. Yes. No, I have to, what I do, it has to be able to survive criticism because it will be criticized definitely of course no no correctly so yes correctly i i want let me tell you one thing yes i like criticism because it makes me better yeah i like i like suggestions i like anything arguments i always benefit i don't feel insulted or anything I actually want, <laughs> want <Yeah>. it. <laughs> <laughs> this was printed in the Washington Post. I wrote a letter to the Post when it had an article that claimed, like all these lately things, this is for you to keep. Thank you. Uh, that an institute in Peru, that institute that I mentioned there, yes. did an experiment imitating Martian conditions in soil in a cube experiment yes. to grow potatoes. Okay. With the purpose, of course, that if we have astronauts go to Mars, to be able to grow food. Yes. On that story, I will tell you more. But I looked at the description of the experiment, and this is my answer. You want would, to you like to, uh, would you like me to read Please. it? Yes. So its space potatoes are not ready for consumption just yet. As an uh, astrophysicist, I must caution against premature optimism from the experiments of the International Potato Center, as described in the April Fall Health and Science Article A, a unique potato that can grow in Mars-like climate. The study cannot and does not full mi fully mimic the conditions on Mars that would hamper the growth of potatoes and other food. We cannot effectively replicate on Earth the absence of a strong magnetic field on Mars, the continuous unshielded exposure to cosmic rays, and the impact of Mars' low gravity, one-third of Earth's, as we mentioned before. Plants also will be challenged by the toxic soil of Mars. The average temperature of minus 75 degrees Fahrenheit we can grow as low as minus 184 degrees. Amazing. The absence of liquid water on the plant surface, etc. How accurately did the simulated atmosphere represent the gas ratios on Mars of 96%, carbon dioxide, 2% argon, 1.9% nitrogen and 0.1% oxygen. Or the air pressure, which is 6% of Earth's, how closely did artificial lighting approximate Martian sunlight and its composition? This research may help us expand farming on Earth, but the researchers have a long way to go, literally to farm on months. Wow. As I'm running into these really problems because we, we continuously, continuously I'm running into these problems. I have a whole folder at home about articles 
and experiments performed by people attempting to show on Earth, Earth. that they can grow, f that they can farm on, on Mars. Mars. There's no way. There's no way. They claim we have Martian-like soil from the Antacama, I don't know where this is, in Peru. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I read about that. It's not possible. The Earth's okay. soil has a components that don't exist on Mars. It has biological components in it, no matter where you go. And it has, besides the gravity and the magnetic field, of course, you know, it's obvious, or yes. the atmosphere, yeah. which affect plants. Has it, Mars has a toxic soil. Yes. Perchlorate, the, f the chemical element perchlorate, on Mars, on Mars, is thousands of times greater than it is on Earth. People have said, uh, perchlorate uh, dissolves in water. Yes. And uh, they have said, okay, we can clear it. You cannot clear it. How are you going to clear a whole planet of perchlorate? And we have it on Earth and we can live with it. Of course you have it on Earth, because it's like we have carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. <laughs> so let's try and save in the Earth first and then we see about Mars, exactly, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And now, exactly. The, the secret that I was keeping for you, you are 97. Yeah. What is the secret? <laughs> Tell me. No. Eating no potatoes in Mars. I'll tell you. <laughs> no. Uh, my philosophy of life? Yes. Want to hear it? I have told Definitely. it. Definitely. Didn't I, have, didn't I tell it? No, you tell me off record. Now let's have the people listen to that. Life's road is not a smooth road. Ups and downs. downs. Good and bad. Problems and solutions. Right? Yes. For everybody. 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 What did I do? I was in two wars. That means I have been yeah, in two yeah. <laughs> Yes, I, I think so. You yeah. change your identity, yeah. you yeah. change your name, you yeah. change... Every time, like everybody else, I run into difficulties, dangerous positions and, and problems. I found a solution for all of them. What's my solution? What? In every time, in every condition, I always said, it could be worse and it isn't. I'm happy. You are in positive. Every, in every you time it could be worse and it isn't. Be happy. That's my philosophy. That's your philosophy. <laughs> so have this philosophy of Mrs. Tassinopoulos and thank you again, once again. I mean, it's, uh, you know that I have dozens of questions. I would like to have you here for hours. <laughs> And, but I will write article, and uh, if you have questions, please email uh, us and contact another us. Thing. Yes. I'm not very religious. I, when I was science and religion. No, let, let me tell you why. As my family was very wealthy. Yes. In Germany. As children, that's why I have three names. Because yes. German elite gave their kids three names. Oh. Nouveau Rich want to repeat, <laughs> imitate the established elite. Anyway, up to five years old, we had Catholic nurses, I and my brother. So whatever they did, they imprinted on us the Catholic yeah, aspect. Five years old, I went to school in Germany, Protestant. All of a sudden, everything changed. Strange. Then 15 years old, I came to Greece, all of a sudden, Orthodox. <laughs> I said to him, I said, wait a minute, you make your cross this way, the Catholics make it this way, and the Protestants don't make it at all. Yet they're all Christians and they all believe in the same God. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> then we have three religions. Judaism, yes. Christianity, Muslim. Yeah. All with the same God. We had the European Middle Ages, Catholic, Protestant, war. 30 million people killed over 30 years. Now we have Muslims killing Sunnis, Sunnis. the same religion. 
I say, what does this all mean to me? There must be something here. You cannot blindly one or the other. Yeah. What's going on? So I'm kind of careful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, uh, I would like to have the, his office uh, here. We have the implant. Uh, thank you again. <laughs> Thank you all for being with us. I told you we've done a journey from 1921 till today. We've yeah. been through wars, But we've been through astrophysics. May I add one thing? Please. People are afraid to die. Yes, that's true. The baby who is born today, the baby who is born today, is born to die. Yes. Nobody can avoid that end. But why, why are people afraid? The unknown, maybe? And all religions, yes. to pacify the people, have stories about life after, after death. death. All religions, even primitive religions, of the Indians of America, the uh, natives of the jungles, they have the same kind of attitude, theories about after life death. after death. India, <laughs> or yeah. everywhere. True. Because people are afraid. We shouldn't. What is to be afraid of? Since you are gone, you are gone. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I believe, too. No, there is, there is no way. I mean, you cannot avoid, avoid it. it. So let don't, it be. Don't. Don't. Me deliteriazis di zoisu. Me pragmata pudemos atalaxis. True. Excuse me. Oh, no, no, it's agree. fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's what you said before, your philosophy. I, I preferred our discussion to be in English because as I did not study my field in Greece, I do not know all the, the terms, expressions, yeah. the proper expressions. <laughs> But most of our ideas are English spoken, so that's, that won't be an issue. It's beautiful. <laughs> yes. We are Greeks and we are proud of that. So that's why I said in the beginning that I have dozens of questions and yeah. we, ha we, might, we can't be here for hours. Yeah. But we need to yeah. uh, leave you and thank you again. And thank you again, Mr. Sinopoulos. I would like to have you again to my show. Thank you for your kindness. No, thank thank you. you. And watch us on Healing TV and on our next show on uh, Conversation with Nadia Themis.